My cocaine! Where's my cocaine? Ah, the strive, you're here. Have you seen my cocaine? Robin, what are you... Wait, who? Oh, do keep up with the strife. My cocaine. How can I review board games without cocaine? Uh, it's not that bad, surely. Not that bad? Can't you see them staring at us? Robin, maybe you should sit down. Sit down. Maybe try this one. Ooh, a board game about me. This week on Which is Greater, we have quite the mystery to solve. It's elementary, Lestrade. We haven't even started yet. Sherlock Holmes' consulting detective is so clearly the greater game, we could put it in a frame and call it a window. Well, I think Detective, a modern crime board game, is the first game for 30 years that can smash that window. <laughs> oh, you do make me laugh, Lestrade. Can you stop calling Lestrade The now? game's afoot! Consulting Detective is a game so deeply embedded in its Victorian setting that I'm surprised smog doesn't spit out of the box when you open it. Inside the beautiful book-like box are ten casebooks filled with story snippets, ten newspapers as if from the period, a beautiful map of London and the London Directory, giving you the address of every character you'll ever meet and quite a few more besides. Obviously this is a mystery game and if that surprises you then perhaps you should go play something else. I think there are some soft toys in the corner. Each case begins by reading the introductory passage from one of the case books. Wilkins leads you up the stairs of 221B Baker Street. Something smells off, like two dozen fish spontaneously shat themselves in a vat of pickled onions. This, this isn't- <laughs> He sure did use that one, didn't he? Uh, Detective is also a game about mysteries, crime and murder, but no flamboyant detectives here. Instead, you're the hard-working cops of the Antares police unit. Each of the game's five cases is represented by a deck of cards, which you'll be searching through to discover the truth. The start of each case has a similar scene-setting ream of text to read, and then you'll be given three or four leads to follow, each one pointing to the correspondingly numbered card. Choose one to draw, and read the text on it. But also pay a cost in time. See, you only have so many days available to finish the case, and if the lead is at a different location, you'll lose time travelling too. Already you're seeing how much more complicated the modern world is. Time, movement, bah, fiddly bits that get in the way of proper deduction, of immersion. I subscribe to Occam's theory. The simplest solutions are the best. In Sherlock you get names of people, or hints to locations, all of which can be cross-referenced on the map or in the directory. This will give you a postcode. Turn to the corresponding entry in the casebook and read the paragraph of text. The directory isn't a game convenience or a mechanic, it's the soul of Sherlock Holmes' consulting detective. This little book full of names and postcodes isn't just the glue that mechanically holds consulting detective together, it brings Sherlock to life. You don't just get a list of leads. You have an entire city of people, their lives, their failures, all calling out to you through the pages. Perhaps today might be the day you'll get to reach out and touch them. Searching for a phone directory might be the kind of thing the Terminator would do in the 80s, but this is the 21st century. We have the internet. So it's like my mind palace, but everyone has access to it? Pretty much. Show me this wondrous creation. I don't remember doing that to Watson. And Detective comes with its own app, which serves as the police department servers. So you can look up important characters in the database, pull up documents, and in one of Detective's coolest features, compare evidence. Throughout the cases, you'll find pieces of physical evidence with a code that can be entered into the app. It automatically compares that to all the other evidence you've gained so far. This might seem like bookwork, and it is but it adds to the experience. It makes you feel like a police officer doing the hard work to bring home the case. And you do. This system creates the opportunity for those big connections to be found, the matching evidence that you weren't expecting. When the player at the computer leaps up and says, I've got it, and everyone rushes round and your understanding of the case changes completely, these are the moments that games like this search for, and Detective does a magnificent job of offering them up to you. Ah, back at last. I was just reading the greatest prop in board gaming. Boo! Fake news! Get out of my segment! 
Each case comes with a copy of that day's newspaper, filled with, well, junk mostly. It, it is a newspaper. But amongst the lumps of historical flavour are the occasional tidbits that will catch your eye. References to your case. Unexpected clues. Or perhaps it just offers distractions. There's always a side case or two thrown in to keep you on your toes, which you can solve for bonus points at the end of the game. Players in Consulting Detective can continue following leads for as long as they like, until they feel ready to face the questions. So come on, Lestrade, what do you think happened? We needed a mid-episode joke. Well deduced. If you get everything right, then you might be in with a chance of beating the great Sherlock Holmes. I mean me. Before that, though, you lose five points for every extra lead you followed compared to Sherlock. This means you are encouraged to carefully consider each lead, but are fairly punished for taking a wrong turn. I mean, no one should go into this game expecting to beat me. That'd be ridiculous. So... How many times have you won them? Oh, many, 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 many times. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, none. But this isn't this isn't a game about being Sherlock Holmes. This is a game about aspiring to be Sherlock Holmes. You know, beating him is all but impossible, but getting over zero points is an achievement to celebrate. There's nothing quite like spending four hours trying to solve a puzzle, knowing you're missing some vital clue, and then being told you're not even worth positive points. Yeah, nonsense. What are you looking for? Some kind of participation trophy? A snowflake? You know Basil Rathbone, are you? But how do you solve these mysteries? Well, too often they rely on these allies, characters you can visit in any case to potentially get some valuable clue. The issue is that there are 14 of these characters, and any one of them might have the key piece of information you're looking for. Of course, Sherlock always hits exactly the one he needs. That's not entirely fair. Each of these characters has their own area of expertise. You know, you've got the coroner, or the society gossip, or the snitch in the London crime circuit, and the case will naturally direct you towards one character over the others. Sometimes, but like you're often dealing with a corpse. You're pretty much always dealing with a crime, and more often than not, you've got some well-to-do character involved. So there's pretty much always a reason to try any of these allies if you look hard enough for it. Mm. Yeah, it's easy to get caught visiting everybody when you're stuck on a case. Mm -hmm. Which detective neatly avoids by having the time limit and no neutral leads? The issue with Sherlock's open-ended end is that players are never 100% sure that they're ready to face the questions, and you can't go back to the case after you've seen them. Detective recognise that the onus is on the game to provide a bounded problem, and give the players the tools they need to solve it in the allotted time. But that only matters if you're uber competitive, and that's kind of missing the point. Can you solve the mystery at all? That's the question. How many leads you follow is just an extra bit of optimization fun. Besides, I'd never want to play a consulting detective case on the perfect route. You'd miss out on all the wonderful writing. It's so good, everyone you talk to in Sherlock feels alive. Your flowery language isn't impressing anyone. Maybe it's your stupid coffee. Seriously though, you know, reading through half a page of overwrought text to be told nothing of importance, that's kind of annoying. No, reading an entire oversized card of tedious menial tasks is insulting to my great mind. Number 103, Headquarters. Antara's evidence storage is a huge hangar back from when the police station was still located here. The police station was moved and the evidence storage stayed. The agency pumped a ton of money into it, added a second hall, automated it as much as was possible, and rigged everything with the Antares computer system. You log into the system, enter the ID number, case number, and verification code, and immediately go to the virtual evidence storage. There are two items attached to the case. In the picture next to the watch there is also a cigar box. The watch must have been kept inside of it. Where did it come from? Interesting. It's functional. Functional? A rule book is functional. A washing machine operating manual is functional. My text adds character. Something I wouldn't expect you to understand. It does get better as the cases go on. Ha, huh, you'd have to play that far first. Well, you should, because it gets really good. The designers have done some incredible things with the format in later cases that you could never do in Sherlock. Okay, whilst you're going off on one about structure, how about the overall structure? 
Detective is a five case campaign. Which is awesome because it builds this bigger narrative. Which sucks because you have to play the cases through with the same group in pretty quick succession, otherwise you'll forget key details of the campaign. Ah, uh, yeah. And that app. It's pretty lame having to cart a suitcase with a laptop into every game night and relying on there being a Wi-Fi. Sure, the app makes Detective harder to pick up and play, uh, and I know some gamers are going to hate it, but since it adds so much to the experience, really helping build immersion, we can't hold that against it. It's not just a gimmick, like newspapers. How dare you! The newspaper is an essential weapon in the consulting detective's arsenal. More than that, it adds a wonderful scene setting and theme to the game. But of course, I wouldn't expect a lover of detective to understand the importance of good storytelling and thematic immersion. Look, just because detective has really bland card text doesn't mean that it doesn't understand storytelling and immersion. The app adds incredible amounts of immersion and the overall plot and mystery is great. This seems to be becoming more and more a debate about presentation. Not entirely. I would argue that detectives' cases are tighter puzzles. Maybe marginally, but it's such a small difference as to be meaningless. Sherlock had not become the great success it is on the back of hopeless cases, where well, God knows I seem to keep you around. Wait, what? But tell me, Matt, about detectives' token system. I notice you've kept that very quiet. Ah, uh, yeah. Tokens. So, each player gets to be a character who provides the group with a certain skill token or two. Throughout the case, you'll come across cards that give you a bit of a hint, but then ask you to spend a token to read the back of the card and potentially get some more info. It's deciding to press suspects more forcefully in an interview. Where are the biscuits? Where are the biscuits? <laughs> Thank you or having more experience with computer systems, letting you hack around and find more clues. But how do you know if it's worth spending one? You don't. And what do you do if you don't have any left? You can't turn over the card. And how essential is the information on the backs of the cards? Very... or not at all. Indeed. Not only does the token system make detective annoyingly, off-puttingly gamey and random for some people, but it also makes it far less accessible than it should be. Yeah, I know. In its defense, it didn't ruin my experience of the game, and how you spend them does open up alternative paths through the cases, adding a spot of replayability to the game. But are you really going to replay it? Uh, no. Sherlock gives you more cases, it's easier to pick up and play, the writing is superb, and it features me, the world's greatest detective. <sighs> so we're giving the golden gravy to Sherlock Holmes then, eh? Well deduced, Lestrade. <laughs> Come Watson, it's time for a new case. I thought I was Lestrade. Well, you did a good job, so I'm promoting you to Watson. It's a rank? What have you got for me, Watson? <clears throat> The Hound of the Snowtails? Oh, please. Uh, what about the Six Napoleonics? Far too much work. A Sagrada in Scarlet? Ooh, now you're talking. Thanks for watching, everybody, and which is greater? We'll be back next week. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get a notification for when it goes live. But remember, we are only consulting reviewers, so the best way you can help the channel is by sharing the videos on social media and liking them. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.